Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. Today I am taking you to the Regency Calf. There you can see behind me. It is probably one of the most famous iconic calves still left in London, opened in 1946. Why is it famous? Bear with me, all will be revealed. Anyway, one of the main reasons I'm taking you here today is because this is one of the, probably one of the only places left in London, probably even the UK, that still does authentic, proper, traditional British food. Uh, if you don't know what traditional, authentic British food is, you're about to find out. I am so excited about this one. Let's go and check this little place out. As it is such a lovely day today, I've decided to take the bus into central London, mainly because you get to see so much more than if you were to take the tube or the underground. And not only that, it's not always just about the food. Sometimes getting to your destination can be just as exciting as the actual event itself. Before we get to the Regency Cath, I've decided to take a small detour just to show you a little bit more of London and what this wonderful city is actually all about. Well done, Chuck. If it's great food you're looking for, look no further. London is renowned for its vibrant restaurants, bars, pubs, and also street food vendors popping up all over the place, offering culinary delights from all around the world. There is so much to see and do in London, from the Thames with its amazing bridges to the royal palaces stooped with history hidden behind their great walls. And without further ado, I'm starting to feel a little bit hungry, so it's time to head to our main destination and what this video is actually all about, the Regency Calf. Opened in 1946, this amazing little calf is renowned for its traditional British food and even won an award for being the fifth best food place in London in 2013. Not only is Regency Calf renowned for its great traditional food, it's also been the backdrop for many BBC films like London Spy, Brighton Rock, Lair Cake, but to mention a few. Not only making it famous, but also making it one of London's top must visit nostalgic calves. Oh yeah, can I order steak and kidney pudding? Pudding, yes. With um, bubble and squeak. I've uh, got no bubble left. Today. Oh, no bubble left. Pork potatoes, chips, peas, carrots. What, what does it come with? Two veg, so what? whichever two you want. Pork potatoes or chips, peas or carrots or cabbage. Cabbage and peas, please. Sorry, and cabbage gravy. and carrots. Cabbage and carrots. Yeah. And gravy. And gravy, yes, please. And you drink. A Coca-Cola, please. 
Nice to find a cat that still does shred British food. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. How much was that all together? 820. 820 bargain. Cheaper half the price. <laughs> we'll just grab a seat and come pick it up when it's ready. Thank you very much. Two egg bacon sausage and chips. Here I am in a Regency Cafe in Regency Street. Really great beer here now. I've ordered myself steak and kidney pudding. Steak and kidney pudding. You just don't get that anywhere anymore. Actually, I actually thought it was extinct. Um, I tried to order some. I was going to order an English breakfast because it's supposed to be proper here, and it also comes with bubbling squeak. But unfortunately. They run out of bubble and squeak because I did actually ask for some on my steak in the pudding bazaar as they claim to see. However, they run out of bubble and squeak just goes to show it is still very popular. Uh, why is it called bubble and squeak? Because that's what it makes you do. It's actually made up with the leftover vegetables from Sunday roast apparently. And uh, the further on in the week it goes, obviously the more potent it becomes. So yeah, no public squeak today, I'm afraid. Probably a blessing in disguise. But anyway, I'm waiting for my uh, steak and kidney pudding to arrive. I've ordered it with two vegetables to come out to around eight quid something, and that includes a can of Coke as well. I mean, not only is it old traditional British, it's also traditional prices. It's old traditional prices for some reason. I don't know how these are buying, but this place is absolutely packed out. I mean, and yeah, I'm so excited. Waiting for my butt, waiting for my steak and kidney pudding. Which has just arrived. Steak and kidney pudding, carrots, and cabbage. You just don't get more traditional than that. Steak and kidney pudding. Oh my god. Suet pastry, cabbage, carrots, traditional gravy. Absolutely delicious. The little thing. Lovely cabbage. Mm -hmm. Traditional British food. Regency cat. It's been that long. And so long since I've had steak and kidney pudding. It just brings back a whole load of memories of back in the day. And you could get steak and kidney pudding in pretty much every cap. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So so good used to be here. Yeah. Stain could be put in cabbage and carrots. God forbid anyone sitting behind me later on. Oh. Really good. Really good. I'm a country boy, and this is country boy food. Rocker. Rocker.
there you have it. I've just had myself steak kidney pudding in the Regency Cafe behind me. Wow, I am bloated, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. So yeah, if you like your trad British food or you want to find out what trad British food really is, Regency Cafe behind me, absolutely amazing. You just don't get more authentic than that. I thoroughly enjoyed my meal and for £8.50 for a can of Coke and a steak kidney pudding with veg. Unbelievable, in London, happy days. Thanks very much for watching Chef's Travels. Hopefully, see you on the next one. Cheers.